next hat represents who? Right, the sample mean or the sample average. Z star, that's new. Z star represents something called the upper critical value. For now, you just think of it as the number of standard deviations that we're interested in. This Greek symbol, sigma, is the symbol for S, which is the symbol for individual standard deviation. And we used that already last week. That's an individual standard deviation. And how about N? That's from last week, too. What does N represent? How big the sample is, the number of people or the number of things in your sample. That's your sample size. So those are all the working parts. Let's actually do a few practice questions. Example one gives us some information about a, new, a, a statewide test. It said that the individual scores had a standard deviation of 21. It said that the number of students that we took in our sample was 49 and we had a sample average of 60. And they're asking us to develop something called a confidence interval with a level of 95%. Well, of all the variables that we have, there's one that we don't have, which is Z, star. And that's one that you have to look up often on a chart. So you actually go to your chart and look up. At the very bottom, you'll, you'll see the percentages. Everybody has both sheets of paper, right? At the very bottom, you go to, here we want 95%. You go directly up to the value that's directly above it at 1.960. So we know all four numbers. Now we can actually build the confidence interval, and it looks like this. The first thing up is the sample mean, 60 plus or minus some number. The stuff that comes after is called the margin of error. Our sample average gave an average of 60. So the true average is around 60. It's 60 plus or minus something. And to figure out what that something is, you just snap these numbers right into each of their places, and you end up getting this. And I try to pick numbers that would work out very nice and easy for us. Square root of 49, 7. 21 divided by 7 is 3. 3 times about 2 comes out to be 6. Let's ignore some of the rounding that I did, but it comes out to be about 6 without the calculator around 6. So altogether, we're getting two answers, 66 and 60 minus 6. 54. So 54 to 66 is going to be our confidence interval. 60 was the average coming from the sample. But we're not after the sample's average. We're after which average? Who's, whose average are we trying to lock down and try to figure out? The population's average, the entire average. So we could say that even though our sample average is 60, there's a very good chance that the true average for all students is somewhere between 54 and 66. Probably our 60 is close enough, but if I give a little bit of a range, it actually gives me more of an opportunity to be correct than just saying it's probably 60. Okay, 60 with a margin of error of 6 points. Now we can up the confidence level from 95% to 99% and see what that does to our interval. And that's what question 1B is all about, right? Question B says everything else is the same except we're dealing with a 99% confidence level. Which of those numbers will change? The Z star. Right, the 1.960. The Z star will, will change. You have to change it to another number. So you have to look that up. So on the chart, you look up 99% and go to 1% one number above that, and it says 2.576. So all the rest is still remaining the same. You get 60 
plus or minus 2.576 times 21 over the square root of 49. So you get 21 over 7, which is 3. 3 times 2 and a half. Well, 2 times 3 and a half. 2 times 2 and a half is 5. And is 5. And then 3 times 2 and a half would be 7, about 7 and a half. So it's around 7 and a half. Not exactly, but good enough for us for our first day of talking about this. So the confidence interval will be the highest at 67 and a half, and the lowest will be 60 minus 7.5, which brings us to 52.5. We had a higher level of confidence. What happened to the margin of error? It got larger from 6 to 7.5 for the margin of error. So the range is actually getting bigger. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I like that you don't know the answer to that one because it's a tough one to say. We have more confidence that this is right, but it's less, spe it's less specific. Here we're less confident in, the, confident in the answer. We're now only 95% sure that we nailed it, and it's a, but it's a shorter range. Here we're more confident, but it's a broader range. In question C, it asks, what about 100% confidence? If you switch to 100% confidence, what would Z star turn into? You're looking for it on the chart, and you're not going to find it because... 100% confidence would mean what for our interval? Zero. It would mean it's from 0 to what would be the upper bound. If we want to be 100% sure that we're right, it would be from 0 to, well, it's not a percentage, it's just points. So 0 to infinity. So the true average is someplace between 0 and infinity, and I'm 100% sure of the answer. Well, great. That's awesome. But that doesn't tell me anything because an idiot could, could have told, you know, anybody could have said that. Well, the answer's got to be something. It's got to be a number, some number. Yeah, and I'm 100% sure it's some number. Well, yay, good for you. So 100% confidence doesn't make any sense. And that's why we often use numbers like 90% to 99% to represent the um, intervals. And then lastly, there's a question D, which talks about changing something else. In question D, it says, keeping everything else the same, the standard deviation is still 21, the sample mean is still 60, and dealing with 95% confidence. What, if, what happens if that sample average of 60 didn't come from 49 students, but came from 400 students instead? What happens if we're talking about 400 students? Will that make the confidence interval larger or smaller? What do you think? Without having to, without, without calculating it, what's it going to do with the interval? Make it smaller or wider? Smaller. So um, if we go to work on the, the math, it's a lot of it's staying the same. It's 60 plus or minus. We're back to 1.960 with 21, and then instead of 49 people, 400 people. And you can do that without a calculator. Square root of 400 is 20. 21 divided by 20 is basically 1. And 1 times 1.960 is going to be putting it at pretty much just like 2. So it would be from 58 to 62. You can see how, more, how much more specific that interval is.